Tudor Dixon. From Marquette to Monroe, this debate is airing live in every corner of the state. Proudly sponsored by WXYZ in Detroit, WXMI in Grand Rapids, WSYM in Lansing, and Oakland University in Rochester. One hour dedicated to getting voters the answers they deserve. This debate starts right now. Good evening, I'm Chuck Stokes and welcome to this live statewide debate from Oakland University at the Oakland Center, the beautiful campus of Oakland University. It's an absolute pleasure having all of you join us. Candidates, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We know how busy your campaign schedules are, especially just a few days before it's time for people to cast those ballots. I'm also joined this evening and pleased to be joined by two of my favorite journalists, also part of our Scripps Media TV operation here in the state of Michigan. Elle and Doug, please introduce yourselves. Hello, Michigan. I'm Elle Myers with WSYM, Fox 47 in Lansing. And I'm Doug Rudin with Fox 17 in Grand Rapids. And as Chuck said, thank you both for being here. All right. Our worst enemy tonight is probably the tick-tock on the clock, so we're going to move as quickly as we can. We have some ground rules that we'll go over with so you understand. The candidates have 90-second opening and closing statements that was negotiated beforehand, and the order of their opening and closing statements were negotiated in a virtual draw a few days ago. The candidates will have 60 seconds to respond to questions from our panelists. They then will have 30-second rebuttals, each one of them, to the question. At that point, we will move on. Elle, you have the very first question to Governor Whitmer. Governor Whitmer, it seems we have our opening statements still to do. Would you want to go ahead, please? I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. <laughs> We're excited. Sure. We thank thank you. And I want to thank our moderators and, of course, thank Oakland University for hosting us tonight. I am a proud Michigander. I've lived here my whole life, and I love this state. I was raised in a bipartisan household where we had different perspectives but a shared set of values. And that's how I know. When we stay focused on what really matters, it's a lot easier to see we all want the same things. Great jobs and great schools, safe roads and safe communities. As governor, I have worked across the aisle to make sure that we're building a foundation for Michiganders to thrive for generations. Let me tell you what I got done. The biggest investment in K-12 education in Michigan history, tripling literacy coaches, expanding tutors so we can get our kids back on track. 170,000 people in our state are now on a tuition-free path to higher education and skills so they can get better paying jobs. We've secured the future of the auto industry is going to be built in Michigan. We've expanded jobs and life sciences, and we're bringing supply chains home and building chips here in Michigan. That is the future of our economy, and I am fighting like hell to make sure women can make their own decisions about their bodies. Tonight, I think you'll hear a lot of divisive rhetoric and misinformation and focus on the past from my opponent. I'll try to stay focused on our shared future. I know that we have real opportunity in front of us, but the big question is this. Are we gonna go backwards or are we gonna drive together to the future? I say, let's step on the accelerator. Thank you, Governor. Mrs. Dixon, now your opening statement. Good evening and thank you. I'm excited to be here tonight. And for those of you who don't know me, I wanna introduce myself. I'm a mom of four girls, I'm a wife, I'm a cancer survivor, and I'm a worker. I spent many years on the shop floor of a steel foundry, and as a mom, I understand what it's like to have kids locked out of school and try to get them back on track. I also know what it's like to want safe communities where our kids can go out and ride their bikes. I know this because I want the same things for my own children. I'm running for governor because Gretchen Whitmer has taken us on the wrong track. She's pushed a radical, progressive social agenda and she hasn't listened to the problems you have every single day. Radical agendas leave, lead to dangerous things to happen in the state. We've lost 82,000 jobs. We see our, our reading scores have plummeted. Our graduation rates have dropped. Our cities are less safe and the roads aren't fixed. Misplaced priorities, broken promises, and no plan. That's what my opponent has to offer. But tonight, you have another opportunity. We can make a change. In 14 days, you can change course. In 14 days, you can put Michigan back on the right track. 
I've traveled the state and from day one, I've been focused on my family friendly plan for Michigan. Tonight, I'll share that plan and I hope to earn your vote on November 8th. Thank you, Mrs. Dixon. Uh, now we'll get to the questions. Hale, your first question to Governor Whitmer. All right. So it seems there are some lingering questions about Proposal 3. If it passes in just a few weeks, how will you legislate if portions of that proposal have to work their way through the courts? Well, let me start with this. Proposal 3 is absolutely necessary to preserve the rights we've had for 49 years under Roe v. Wade. When the Supreme Court decided to upend it and overrule Roe, Michigan was poised to revert back to a 1931 law that makes abortion a felony. No exceptions for rape or incest, throwing doctors and nurses in jail. The only reason it's not in effect right now is because of my lawsuit. We have an opportunity to enshrine Roe into law by supporting ballot initiative three. Now, the other side will say all sorts of wild-eyed things that are not true. Parental rights and consent will still be effective. We know that regulations will still be in effect. The simple truth is the way to protect women and ensure that future generations have the same rights we've had for 49 years is by adopting Proposal 3, and I will be a yes vote. Mrs. Dixon? Yeah, it's unfortunate that we're not being honest about what Proposal 3 is. The governor has just been dishonest with you in her very first answer. We know that Proposal 3 does remove parental consent. It also makes it so that you don't have to be a doctor to perform an abortion. But it does align with her agenda. Her past, she's voted against a ban on partial birth abortion. And Proposal 3 allows abortion up to the moment of birth for any reason, including sex selection. There will be no legislating around Proposal 3 because it will be language in the Constitution. So we can't put those protections that we've had in place back in place that we've had in place for all of these years. So when Governor Whitmer tells you that this is going to be Roe, it's not even close to Roe. It's not codifying Roe in our Constitution. But it would be the most radical abortion law in the entire country. The only place that has something similar are China and North Korea. Governor Whitmer, you have 30 seconds to rebut if you'd like to. Absolutely. None of what she just said is true. And here's why you can't trust anything she's saying when it comes to reproductive rights. She's the one that said a 14-year-old child raped by her uncle is a perfect example of someone who should not have reproductive rights and the ability to choose. She went further to say it is healing for a person who's raped to carry that child to term. I couldn't disagree more, and she's proven you cannot trust her on this issue. You want to protect Roe v. Wade rights? Vote yes on three. Thank you, Governor. Mrs. Dixon, you have 30 seconds to rebut. The people will decide what they want to do on abortion rights in the state of Michigan. Abortion rights will be decided by Proposal 3, or it will be decided by a judge. We already know that that's the case in the state of Michigan. The governor has the most radical opinion of abortion. She was asked twice in the last debate if she had any limits on abortion. She refused to answer because she has no limits on abortion. So when she calls me extreme, the truth is that there's no more extreme position than Governor Whitmer's on abortion. All right. Doug, your question yeah. to Ms. Dixon. Let's, let's stick with abortion. It's, of course, uh, a very potent issue right now. And you'll appear on the ballot right next to it. Very simple question. We danced around it just a moment ago in both of your answers, but I want to know, in your case, Mrs. Dixon, if Proposal 3 passes or any of these court uh, battles work out in the favor of uh, the governor or any of these groups seeking to codify abortion rights in Michigan, will you accept that as the will of the people? Absolutely. I have said that from the very beginning. There are no laws that I say I think that I'm more powerful than that. I know the governor has gone around laws before and in fact gone around the Constitution and doesn't believe that the governor is beholden to law or Constitution. But I do not feel that way. Absolutely. If this is what the people want, then I will enforce that. And of course, conversely, if Proposal 3 fails if any of these lawsuits don't work out in the favor of yourself or any of these groups seeking, uh, again, to codify abortion rights. Will you accept that as the will of the people, Governor? I will always accept the will of the people. I think uh, you, you're asking a really interesting question, though. When you say, will you accept the will of the people, I think that is a question that should be posed to Mrs. Dixon. She refuses to accept the outcome of the last election. She has not yet said she will accept the outcome of the next election. So when she says she will accept the will of the people, 
She is an election denier and does never, ever has said that Joe Biden actually won this last election. Now let's go back to abortion rights. First of all, this isn't about me. This is about all the women and girls in our state. This is about the ability to have bodily autonomy, be treated as a full American citizen. Mrs. Dixon will tell you here that she'll abide by whatever happens with regard to the ballot initiative three. Behind closed doors, she tells her radical special interest group she will do anything necessary to curtail abortion rights. The governor absolutely matters to this right. My loss is the only reason it's not in effect right now. Will she sign laws abridging that right? Thank you, Governor. Uh, Ms. Dixon, I'd like to give you your 30 seconds, of course, to rebut, but just one thing to throw in. You said you don't support criminalizing abortion. That's exactly what this 1931 law in the books does. So in your rebuttal, I would also like to know if you would make any changes to that. I would like to comment on Gretchen Whitmer and her demeanor tonight coming after me, calling me an election denier. We know that this is going to be the way the evening goes, but I'm wondering when she will say that she can't run with Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist anymore, because I would believe that he is also an election denier since he came out in 2017 and asked for a recount. In fact, he said that the, the election system in Detroit was, I think the quote is, in complete chaos. So I'm wondering if she's going to say that she can no longer run with an election denier. Thank you for that. 30 seconds to you, Governor. <laughs> That's silly. I'm going to stay focused on fighting to make sure that women in the state still have the ability to make our own decisions about our bodies and our futures. Let's be very clear. The right to have reproductive choice is important for women of all ages from all walks of life. We know that women who go through IVF have to sometimes have selective reduction to increase the odds that they take a baby to turn. We know that women who have a partial abortion, partial miscarriage, need an abortion. This will impact us all. Thank you, Governor. Chuck has your next question. Thank you. Uh, candidates, we asked over the last week or so Michiganders to send in questions that they would like to ask you themselves. They can't be here, so we're going to be their surrogates, so to speak. Uh, inflation is something that is very much on the mind of Michiganders. Governor, I'll begin with you. This is a question from Mason Spence. The viewer said, with high levels of inflation hurting our pocketbooks, what step would you take with state legislators to help relieve the weight of inflation for Michiganders? And I want to add to that, is this a sign from an average citizen that the Whitmer-Biden economic plan has failed? So let's talk about inflation. We know that there is global inflation. It is not unique to Michigan. It is not unique to the United States. A governor cannot fix global inflation. But what I can do is put more money in your pockets. And that's exactly what we've done. Working in a bipartisan way with a Republican legislature, we were able to help 150,000 families get free or low cost daycare, money in the pocket. We were able to expand opportunities to have the state pick up a third of the cost of daycare for working families. And we also have put 170,000 Michiganers on the path to tuition-free skills. That's how we keep money in the pocket. I put our fiscal house in order by paying down debt, and we've gotten our credit rating upgrade, upgraded, and that's how we can eliminate the retirement tax, triple the earned income tax credit, and pause the sales tax on gas. All proposals I've made that are sitting in front of the legislature. Mrs. Dixon, it's easy to criticize and point fingers when you're not in power. If you had been in power when all of the things that have happened over the last four years have happened, what decisions would you have made that would have helped change what is going on with our economy? And if elected by the people, what is your specific plan to make the economy better? Well, I've heard several times from Gretchen Whitmer that she'll work with anyone on anything and, and that she's bipartisan, but she's actually vetoed quite a bit of opportunity to put money back into the pockets of the people. She vetoed a child tax credit. She vetoed two opportunities to reduce the income tax. She also vetoed retirement help for retirement income. So when she's had the opportunity to actually do that, she's vetoed it. In fact, even a gas tax holiday came to her and she vetoed that. But we know that part of her policy was to raise the gas tax by 45 cents per gallon. So you'd be paying $5 a gallon for gas right now. This 
governor has not done anything to help inflation, but I would put money back in your pockets. I would make sure we have that child tax credit. I would make sure that we reduce the income tax, and I would make sure that our seniors who are on a fixed income are not receiving more taxes than they should, and we can put more money back in their pockets. Governor? So listen, we would never raised the gas tax, number one. In fact, we have cut taxes. Number two, the bills Mrs. Dixon refers to were a gimmick. Republicans in Lansing wanted to tell you that they were cutting your taxes, but they didn't even take effect until spring of next year. I don't have time for games, and I don't think you do either. What I would like to know is how Mrs. Dixon plans to balance a budget giving $12 billion away and not shifting costs on to you. That's where I would be most concerned as we think about the cost shift onto people. Thank you, Governor. Mrs. Dixon. And she can work with anybody, but now the bills from Republicans are a gimmick. In fact, I, I think she's been on the House floor twice, so maybe she should have gone and tried to negotiate so that she could actually get some of those tax cuts. And I love how she says, just so you know, we never increased the gas tax. Yes, thanks to my lieutenant governor candidate who made sure we did not increase the gas tax. But even though in 2018 she stood on the debate floor and said it was nonsense and ridiculous, the idea of her raising the gas tax to pay for roads, it was one of the first things that she tried to do when she was in office. All right. Yeah, your question to go. All right, so switching gears a little bit here, people across the state have seen a significant spike in energy costs. Just in the last couple of weeks, our viewers in Lansing with BWL saw a significant increase. So I'm curious, how will you help Michiganders afford utilities this winter? And is there a change in the future of energy? Mrs. Dixon, we'll start with you. Well, first and foremost, I think it's important to talk about Line 5 because we know that there's a lawsuit out right now that Gretchen Whitmer would like to shut down Line 5 in the state of Michigan. That would be catastrophic and raise our energy costs in a time when exactly what you're saying, we have people that are having trouble heating their homes. And we know that Line 5 provides 65% of the propane in the Upper Peninsula, 55 in the Lower Peninsula, and the jet fuel for the Detroit airport. It's very crucial that we do everything we can to lower costs. Another way to lower energy would have been to pass a gas tax holiday so that people don't have to pay as much on their gas bill when they fill up their car. We need to make sure we do everything possible in the state of Michigan to lower the cost of energy for our people. Governor Whitmer. First, let me clarify. There has been no change in Line 5. No change. In fact, the tunnel continues to move forward. All of the permits have been executed, and it's sitting in front of the MPSC and the federal government. I think that's important to note. Secondly, we know that costs have gone up on everything, and that's why building out energy alternatives is really important to giving you alternatives to help bringing down the cost of energy, and that's why We've really diversified and are continuing to do work in our portfolio. More wind, more solar. Right now, Michigan has the number one, the number one state for clean energy jobs in the country because we are focused on building out alternatives, ensuring our energy independence, protecting you from spikes, and protecting our Great Lakes. It's not one or the other. We must do all of it. Mrs. Dixon, you have 30 seconds to rebut. We have to be really careful that we don't kneecap our economy with a radical energy agenda. And Line 5 has not been shut down, but that's not because Gretchen Whitmer hasn't tried. In fact, even Joe Biden came out and said, you can't really shut this down. In fact, Justin Trudeau, who I would say is the most radical environmentalist in the entire world, came out and invoked a 1977 treaty telling Gretchen Whitmer she could not shut down Line 5. So the only reason it's not shut down is because other people have stopped her radical energy agenda. Governor? Mrs. Dixon wants to do things they've always, the way they've always been done, with a look to the past. I want to build lightnings. I want to make sure that we are expanding our energy alternatives in clean energy and being good stewards of our water. We know that climate change is already having a huge impact, whether it's the tornado in Gaylord or the flooding in Midland. I showed up, I helped people get through it, but we need to build out clean energy alternatives and be a driving force in the transition in our autos. Thank you both. So 
shortly after we announced this debate, I heard from one of our viewers in Norton Shores. His name is Greg Tierman. Uh, and he had a question about the retirement tax, uh, which, of course, I think a lot of people do. Uh, Greg gets his income from an IRA and a 401k that he and his employers contributed to over the years. Uh, Governor, entering your first term, you promised to repeal the retirement tax. Uh, so, of course, Greg wants to know if you still plan to do that with a potential uh, second term. But he takes it farther. He says that your plan uh, repeals only pensions, uh, uh, your repeal, your proposed repeal would uh, cover only pensions. Uh, but again, Greg gets his uh, retirement from a 401k, so would it cover all retirees? Would that tax break cover all retirees? Uh, what can we tell Greg? So Greg, when I was in the legislature, the Republican governor and Republican legislature pushed through the retirement tax. They started taxing people who worked for a living, played by the rules, set aside money, and now are living on fixed incomes. And I said it was wrong then, and it is still wrong. I am trying to repeal the retirement tax. The thing standing in my way is the Republican legislature in Lansing. I have done a lot of work with them, but they are standing in the way of us repealing this. I want to give you relief. You played by the rules. You should be able to reap the rewards of, of the work that you did over a lifetime and not have this new tax when you're on fixed incomes. So absolutely, I have tried to get the retirement tax repealed, a Republican legislature standing in the way. With a second term and a new legislature, I'm hopeful we can finally get it done. All right. Uh, Ms. Dixon, if you're elected, what's your plan for the retirement tax? Well, Greg, first of all, I want to note that your question, your exact question about increasing the exemption for retirement income, that actually did go to the governor's desk, and that was another one of her line item vetoes. She had the opportunity to reduce that. She did stand on the debate stage in 2018 and say that that was one of her top priorities was to eliminate the retirement tax. But as you noted, that would be for public pensions, not all retirees. So I do want you to be assured that I feel it's very important that we make sure that money goes back into the pockets of all retirees in the state of Michigan, especially as we head into a recession. We're already seeing this massive inflation because of the Biden-Whitmer policies. The recession is right at our, at our doorstep, and I want to make sure that we get as much money back to our retirees as possible. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Dixon. And uh, before you rebut, Governor, I will remind you that in your second term, you very well could have a GOP legislature. You know, I think we'll have a much more reasonable legislature because we just went through term limits. I'm sorry, redistricting. And I'm hopeful that we will actually get legislators who are representative of the people they serve. But I think it's important to ask a question. Mrs. Dixon has said she will eliminate the retirement tax. How is she going to balance the budget? She has said that she will cut income tax. That's $12 billion on the budget. How is she going to balance that? She's toyed with a sales tax. Is she going to raise the sales tax by an additional eight cents? These are questions I think we need answers to. Ms. Dixon? I've talked about repealing the income tax over time, a responsible reduction of the income tax and removing it over an eight to 10 year period. This is not a radical concept. We have nine states in the nation that already have no income tax. In fact, not only do they have no income tax, but they are thriving economically. And as you bring more people into the state, you have more revenue as a state. If we could look to the future and balance our budget better, the governor has already put an additional almost $20 billion into the budget in the four years That's that she's time, been Mrs. there. Dixon. Thank you for that answer. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we have a couple more questions here on another important topic, education, which everyone says that they're very concerned with. Uh, this particular question comes from Anna Wolf. She's in Madison Heights. She wants to know, what will you do to help improve the public schools in Michigan? Also, uh, Ellie Rakenstein of Bloomfield Hills, along the same vein, says, how will you as governor change the education system in the state and keep oversight over the state superintendent and the Michigan Department of Education? Uh, if you talk with many of the organizations that are concerned about education, business leaders for Michigan and others, they will tell you that we are not a top 10 state yet and that that is one of our goals. We just recently saw that for fourth and eighth grade, that the test scores for reading and math have plunged. How will you make us a top 10 state? As you noted, we are not a top 10 state. We're not even close. We're actually a bottom 10 state right now. We just got our test scores back for fourth and eighth graders, and we are really 
doing horribly in reading and math for fourth and eighth graders. This is something that has been a pillar of my campaign, to bring education back in the state of Michigan. Not only do we want to make sure that parents are involved in education, but we want to make sure that our kids are back on track from the pandemic. Most states that had schools out as long as Michigan, which there are very few, so close to as long as the state of Michigan had students out of school, have had comprehensive tutoring programs go into their schools. The governor has talked about literacy coaches going into our schools. I haven't found any schools that have literacy coaches yet, but I want to have a comprehensive 25-hour tutoring program for every student across the state to make sure that they get back on track from the years of online learning that they endured under this, this governor's policies. All right. Governor, you've been in office for four years now. Harry Truman said the buck stops at your desk. You've had four years to try to fix education in this state. Why is it not where you would want it to go at least four years ago where you said you wanted it to go? We've also had some historic challenges over the last <laughs> few years, I think, to put it lightly. You know, Mrs. Dixon says that I kept students out longer than any other state. That's just not true. I worked closely with my Republican and Democratic governors, and kids were out for three months. Um, the fact of the matter is, education is what levels the playing field for people, and we've underinvested in it for decades. We got the biggest investment in public education done in a bipartisan way to support teachers, to bring down class sizes, to wrap our kids with supports like mental health supports, tutors, and literacy coaches, making class sizes smaller. This is how we improve outcomes. But it's only been a couple years, and we've had a pandemic to navigate. The reason kids were out of school during the pandemic was because we were working off of knowledge from 1918 when kids died from the last global pandemic. As a mom, all I was thinking about was saving the lives of our kids. Ms. Dixon, you have a rebuttal? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just heard an audible gasp around town when Gretchen Whitmer said.